India is battling the coronavirus pandemic. I have with me Dr. K. Vijay Raghavan. He's a chemical engineer by training. He led one of India's most important biological laboratories in Bangalore for a while. And he is the principal scientific advisor to the government of India. Uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, you have a very simple and a, what seems like a sustainable solution of trying to contain the coronavirus pandemic using masks. Can you please explain that? Uh, thank you very much, Pallav. It's a pleasure as always to be with you. Uh, and let me just put some these things in a context very briefly, and I'll give you a brief explanation. First of all, the context we must keep in mind is, you know, this is a disease which is powerful, but it's unintelligent. And we are both powerful and intelligent. And if we know how the virus works, we can attack it. Now, we know that the virus communicates from, goes from one person to another through droplets, which are spread, sneezing, coughing, or even conversation person is close by, right? So if an infected person is close by, or if someone is an infected person, both people need to take uh, care. And therefore, masks are useful, particularly when you are close to people who are potentially infected or you are potentially infected. So healthcare workers, or if you're visiting a healthcare facility, that's good to wear. If you're near an infected person, it's good to wear. And that's a standard thing. Now, let's look at another very simple thing which has happened all over the world and recently here. We have had, you know, a lockdown in which we are asked to keep social distance. And many of us who are well-to-do can manage that. But what about people who lived in cramped quarters, several people together in a room? What does social distancing mean in those contexts? They might be far away from each other when they they're outside, but the inside they have to stay in, in a very small area. There, in case someone sneezes or coughs, it's useful to protect the others as a precaution, right? And as a precaution, it's wise to have a mask. It's not that the person is likely to be infected or not. That's a separate matter. But it is good social practice at a time like this. So, so therefore, your... go ahead. What is your advisory on the masks? The advisory is that masks, you have to see as a context of the many different components of protection which you have. You wash your hands, you maintain social distance, you wear a mask when needed, you, you know, look after the vulnerable, you look after each other. There are many, many components to this. There is no one magic component to that. That's important to keep in mind. So... This is amongst the list of things you have to do. This is one of the things we have to do. Uh, something you mentioned in, in the note that if 50% of the people use mask and 80% use mask, what would be the consequences on the pandemic? Can you explain that? Yeah, you know, it's really, you know, those, those kinds of calculations are like all such calculations, very simplified, but are used to be illustrative. So, you know, when you talk in a public document, you don't, you know, talk in a technical way, you simplify it. But fundamentally, this means that if people who are infected or likely to be infected or are asymptomatic and likely to be infective, then, you know, they having masks on protects others. And so those are the kinds of estimates which one makes. Uh, and when people who wear masks, the kinds of filters and layers which are there, studies testing the kinds of particles which can go through, estimate what are the likelihood of your being infected. So these are very approximate guesses. They're useful as a way of showing that not how effective they are, but how, you know, what is the range? This is not a all watertight or, you know, virus tight protection, but it helps to a significant extent. Uh, you also have a sustainable solution for making of masks. Uh, till now, we were thinking 
that they could only be made in large factories and they were specialized. You have a do it yourself or a DIY kit on making masks. Uh, how does that work and has that been tested? You know, I must say that, uh, you know, the whole idea of uh, making do it yourself masks using materials available locally uh, and design and putting the design in locally is something which our team worked very hard and figured it out in our local context. There are groups all over the world who have tried it. So this is something which all the idea and the credit for making these masks and trying them out goes to them. And yes, they have they have done that. And they've been tested? Well, you know, you wear the mask, you know theoretically what will happen. You don't want to test them uh, by going to someone who's infected. No, you don't have to do a clinical trial, but you can make yeah. out what is what, how yeah, much yeah, yeah. particle size, etc. No, so no, rough no, test. no, no, no. Those those kinds of tests were done by looking at by several people all over the world who have said that if you have one layer of cotton, particle sizes of such and such can go through, and if you put two or three layers, that's what happens. So those are rigorous estimates. I don't think that's a problem. Again, these are not perfect. These are not you know why filters, but they are very useful in crowded situations. Uh, many people have suggested that people who have beards will have problems using masks. Both of us are clean shaven. Both of us, I'm sure, when we step out are using masks. Uh, do you have a fair understanding on what happens to bearded people? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't thought of that, nor have I, I'm not familiar with experiments there about you know, how droplets stay on and beards or not and how long they stay. It's a very interesting experiment. Even as we look for a repurposed drug or a vaccine, as the principal scientific advisor for the government of India, your recommendation on masks you think is a valuable contribution which can help the country avert the peaks which we may encounter? Well, you know, there are, these are uh, different kinds of uh, comparisons. You know, the hand washing, masks, proper social behavior is one category, which is very, very important. I wouldn't underestimate that. Because, you know, if you have sufficient distance effectively between people, then you break transmission. So that's not a, you know, small achievement. Uh, if a person, for example, uh, infects uh, two or, you know, people on average, let's say, and that person who's infected has a mask and doesn't infect those two people, it's, it's very valuable. Uh, conversely, those two people don't get infected. Uh, the repurposing of drugs and vaccines address a different issue. How does one treat the disease? And so that's something which labs all over India, all over the world are doing, and it'll be really wonderful to see success. And I'm sure that given the number of lottery tickets which have been bought on that front, someone will win that lottery and we'll be better off. Well, the lottery you have given to India by suggesting that most people use masks is a cheaper lottery and the likelihood of winning the war against the coronavirus pandemic may be much easier using simple do-it-yourself at ma made at home masks than anything else. Uh, but but, 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 but may, I, may I just interrupt, yes. sorry. Yes. I think, you know, that's, it's, it's again, you know, it is true that these simple measures are important. Uh, and it's also true, as I started by saying, that one should not, you know, fear this enemy, one should tactically attack this enemy. And there's no need to panic or worry or go into any kind of uh, indecisive mode. And therefore, these simple tools are important. But the disease is complex. We understand its complexity. And the other tools which are being taken uh, are also very important, uh, like you mentioned, drugs and vaccines and other kinds of efforts. So every, every single tool in your toolbox is important, and it's not one or the other, or it's not that one is sufficient. Sure, but you give you give a simple solution. Others are offering fairly complex things like ventilators and 
and vaccines and drugs and all of that you're giving a very simple solution no, use mask but... and get it and 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 maybe you will save yourself and save others well you know the ventilators is an important point ventilators are used for those who are critically ill yes. and those are not people who became critically ill because they didn't wear masks or they did wear masks there are all multiple circumstances which lead to a person becoming critically ill so it's not that mask will save you uh, from being critically ill but it will certainly you know be helpful and lower the probability if there's a huge viral load hitting you it will greatly decrease that viral load uh, what a pleasure speaking to you dr vijay raghavan uh, you always find simple solutions for complex problems i hope the ministry of health listens to some of this and takes it forward uh, in new delhi palav bagla thank you very much palav uh, we work together with all arms of the government so i'm sure that you know things will go ahead